If you look closely around the UT campus, you'll find all kinds of historical artifacts. Some of the coolest technology in the world, and sometimes if you look really close, you'll find some truly remarkable secret spots. Cockrell Hall houses one of these buried treasures, a place where noise quite literally vanishes. You step in and it's like, boom, everything's gone. Can, it sounds yeah. like you're talking into Ooh, a pillow. Cool. Oh my God. Probably the coolest thing that I've done this year, it was like right here, about like a five minute walk from my dorm room. I didn't realize how loud everything in the outside world is. And then when I walked in here, it was just dead silent. And that was kind of bizarre. The best part was definitely when I had someone scream. Someone like, actually like, <laughs> Were you screaming? Were you yeah. screaming? It wouldn't be like a scream, you'd hear like a tiny whisper. It was really cool to be able to step into a room and experience something that I really never thought I'd ever get the chance to. Texas! Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> People are not used to hearing how dead sound can be. It sounds unnatural. Sound in general is something that has been with people their whole lives, and most people have not stopped to think, what is sound? In a room like this, when someone claps, you just hear this reverb, which you've kind of become accustomed to. It just sounds fascinating when a sound passes by your ears and doesn't come back. So what exactly is this room, and why does it even exist? It's called an anechoic chamber, and surprisingly, you can find them all over the world. Hearing aid companies and smartphone companies have been using them for years. But here at UT, the chamber is yet another research tool for the Cockrell School of Engineering. And meaning no or anti-echo. So no echo, <laughs> that's all it really means. The University of Texas built its anechoic chamber for a variety of purposes, but really centered around electroacoustics and testing electroacoustic devices. It's invaluable in the sense that it's very hard to find one that's easy to use and available. This is built as a room in a room. And so the outer wall is just a regular cinder block wall that's air gapped from the internal chamber. Uh, the chamber wall also is, is cinder blocks and heavy filled with concrete. That air gap then allows additional acoustic and vibrational isolation from the environment. And then as you step in, you can also see sort of the side view of the acoustic wedges that are there and that those acoustic wedges are actually offset as well from the interior wall to help with absorption of sound at the lowest frequencies. You'll see is the walls are cone-shaped, and effectively what that does is as the sound wave arrives, it bounces off of these cones, and the cones are angled such that it bounces back and forth and effectively traps the wave. All right, so let's go ahead and close the external door, which eliminates most of the, the noise, the sound from the outside. Okay, so that gives us a really good seal from the outside. We rarely experience an environment that is very, very quiet. So now we're fully inside the anechoic chamber. At this point, why don't we just be quiet for a second and capture the sort of the noise floor and the, the lack of sound in the room. So the work that we do is really focused on the reception of sound. That allows us to do two things. It allows us to get very accurate measurements for very sensitive devices. And the second thing that allows you to do is to measure energy of a source to characterize how strong it is, how directional it is. This work was actually inspired by a species of fly known as the Ormia ocracia. We realized that it did not use two decoupled ears like a person does. It actually has this structure that rocks back and forth like a teeter-totter, and that has an inherently directional response to sound, where if sound is coming from the side, it's like two children of equal weight where the pressure difference moves this. We mimicked that and made a uh, microphone based on this principle. We have to start with a simple controlled environment like the anechoic chamber to study the device and quantify it. 
So we use sound in very, very different ways to connect with people in terms of understanding what we're trying to do.